Welcome back to RetroCAD. This is the Vintage Computer Fest Midwest Virtual Edition of RetroCAD. And today we're going to give kind of a retrospective of all of the vintage CAD machines that I have. I'm an AutoCAD enthusiast, but I also get into some other CAD platforms. So today we're going to take a quick look through my collection of Pentium, 486, 386, 286, and 8086 machines. We're going to run every version of AutoCAD, every version, perhaps every version of AutoCAD, from AutoCAD 2000 back to AutoCAD version 1. So let's take a look. Our first RetroCAD machine is this Gateway Solo 9500 laptop. Now it's a Pentium 2, I believe, and it's running Windows 2000. So it's perfect here to run AutoCAD 2000i. Now interestingly, AutoCAD 2000i is actually, in my opinion, the fastest version of AutoCAD. Like, look how fast that just loaded up. It is a crazy, crazy quick version of AutoCAD that I got a ton of work done in. I really enjoyed this version and used it for quite a long time until we moved to XP. And I think we might have even run this version under XP for a while. But it had a lot of UI refinements and generally speaking, it was really nice. This laptop also features a iOmega click drive, one of my favorite peripherals. Our next machine here is a Gateway Solo 2500. It runs Windows 98 and I have it loaded up with AutoCAD Release 14. Um, I've got a couple machines with Release 14. This was another big release, you know, in the world of AutoCAD for me. We used it for many, many years because it was really, really stable and a, a pleasure to use. And it was really the first version of AutoCAD that, that I think is an official Windows release. You know, some of the previous ones that we'll see shortly were more of a kludge, like forced into previous versions of Windows. Maybe that's just my opinion. This laptop also features a click drive because of how much I love those things. 40 meg of good times. So here we have a Compaq Prolinea 575. And this is a Pentium 75 running Windows 95. And here I'm running, looks like AutoCAD 14 on this guy. Um, this was probably my first retro machine when I got back into this a couple years ago. I had kind of let the whole retro thing go by the wayside for quite a while and then just picked it up and got back in here. So again, this is release 14. This machine has a really great spec. I think it has like 192 meg of RAM. So it's really like running full tilt here for this version of AutoCAD. And what are we going to do here? I'm going to do a little zooming around. AutoCAD release 14 had dynamic zooming. So you could actually like gently zoom back and forth like this. So nice. And then as you can see, this machine also has a GoTech USB drive. So it can read in these uh, semi-proprietary USB quote unquote disks to load things. And that's how everything got loaded on this machine. Now we're switching over, same machine. This is just a different view where I'm going to run through the DOS versions of AutoCAD that are on here. And I believe this is AutoCAD release 13. Yes, it is. And let's see what kind of drawing we load up. I've got a huge library of retro drawings from my career in the past 30 years of working on this stuff. Ah, so here we have a drawing that is the first Wisconsin building in Milwaukee. And the reason I'm loading this one up is to show you the hide and shade features of AutoCAD Release 13. Now, this hide is sped up 1,200 times. It took a long, long time to do this hidden line removal. And the same goes for this shade. And honestly, even the screen draws were, were kind of slow. So I just decided to speed that up to make this video more watchable. And then with many of the AutoCADs that I'm going to show you, I like to look at the layer box. I think that's where you see a lot of the development of the UI in AutoCAD. And then also just some of the pull down menus will probably hop through. This is release 12. And in release 12, what are we going to load up? Let's take a look. I'm looking over my own shoulder now. We're going to load up. The Star Trek drawing. Awesome. So this is the USS Enterprise. 
And again, I'm just doing the basic things of AutoCAD, zooming around, seeing some stuff in the drawing, and taking a look at the UI. Now, of course, I do a lot deeper dives than this on particular AutoCAD versions, but in the editing I discovered this video was already pretty darn long, so I tried to compress some of this stuff out and just give you an overview of how these different releases looked and behaved on these machines. Now I'm just going through the pull-down menus to give you an idea of what the UI was like. It was cool when pull-down menus came out because before that we had to just type everything or use that screen menu on the right side where it says AutoCAD and Zoom and stuff. I was actually a pretty big fan of the screen menu, but pull-downs are a big deal. So here is release 11. Now this is an educational version and it's actually a locked version that requires a hardware lock in the parallel port. Uh, I think I got that one off of eBay and uh, it was an interesting find. It runs really well. I've also used it to run some of the other plugins of that time like Auto Solid and Auto Vision. So here I have a drawing from here in southeastern Wisconsin. And uh, what are we going to do? We're probably going to zoom around and look at the layer box. Let's see. Yep, we've zoomed. And now we are going to the pull-down menus, probably to find the layer control box. Now look at this. This is the old style, like the quote-unquote first style of layer boxes that, you know, or as they were called, DCL controls within AutoCAD. And you could control it, it didn't have to be yellow, you could set some of the screen colors. But starting from about here back, AutoCAD was really proprietary about the drivers that had to be used to get higher resolution and higher color depth video modes. All right, so this machine is the 486 that I built last winter. Uh, this is a 486-100 and First, we're just going to be right in Windows 3.1, and we're going to run AutoCAD LT. So the UI of AutoCAD was really moving along at this point, and you started to see these, like, uh, what do I want to call them, like, icon menu floating menus, floating icon menus, perhaps, that would get used for the commands. And you can see up on the toolbar that the UI is actually pretty minimal. You've got your OSP for ortho snap and p for something that starts with p oh previous selection set and uh you know it looks like a windows 3.1 program the preferences and settings are really light in here there's not a lot you can really tune but it was really great when it came out and we were all super excited some of the ui elements in here do get a little weird and i think we'll see that more as we move back another version these pull-down menus actually look pretty, eh, pretty normal, you know, from the state of things. And of course, it had an about screen. Moving along. We are getting into AutoCAD release 13 for Windows, which was terrible. It was objectively terrible. It was just AutoCAD 13 for DOS jammed into a Windows environment. Not a real big fan of this personally, and I didn't really use this in battle quite a bit. Uh, you see it took a while to load up there, and uh, I, I was just not a fan. The DOS version of AutoCAD 13 was actually quite good, and uh, that's, that's where I spent most of my time. But again, you can see we've got these floating icon-based menus, we're gonna open up a drawing here. This is one of the drawings that is a sample drawing that comes with AutoCAD, the house plan. You'll see this in a number of older AutoCAD demos. And it was actually a pretty, pretty big file. I used this drawing quite a bit when I did some benchmarking of this machine after I built it. Uh, why did I build this machine? Oh, I built it pretty much, oh, I'm sorry, before I get away from it. Look at these menus, like the little face that goes on and off and stuff. I built this machine pretty much because I had found this amazing rack mount case on eBay and decided like, I have to make a cool 486 that goes in it. 
Um, no, this is still not the one with the weird pull downs. So we'll just move through these menus. And I think we've seen what we came to see. Here's the properties box for AutoCAD release 13. Man, it takes a long time to come up, but there it is. Not a lot to do in here, probably even less than before. Oh, I see that was the properties for a line. I thought it was gonna be the settings, but apparently not. This is what it's like when I record the audio later than when I recorded the demo. So now we're gonna go into AutoCAD release 11 for Windows. This was kind of a secret release of Windows that not a lot of people, of Windows, of AutoCAD, that not a lot of people were aware of. Uh, kind of flew under the radar, and it came out at the same time as one of the DOS versions of AutoCAD. And this was really the first actual Windows version of AutoCAD. And it's fine. Again, it's super minimal. It looks a lot like AutoCAD LT and kind of behaves like it too. And I believe this is the version where we're gonna see some unusual UI elements. Of course, it's got the screen menu here on the right side, which is just like the older classic versions, but it's got these dialog boxes as well. So moving to the, are we gonna to move to them? Pull down menus. Ah, the layer box, can't miss that one. It really kind of looks like it should. So as we move through these pull down menus, you'll see the first few look kind of like you'd expect them. Here's the settings for AutoCAD release 11. Again, super minimal. But now things get weird. Whoa, what is this? It's like some kind of combination icon text pull down experience. I don't know what they were thinking here. Personally, I'm really not into somebody's drawing of what a command should look like, but I, I mean, I get it. I get what a UI is all about and you know what, what icons are, but personally, I wanna see like some words and maybe even to type those words because I'm an old school AutoCAD user. So this is pretty much AutoCAD release 11. And I think I did a video on this particular release that you can check out. It has kind of a cool about screen too with a little animation on there. Neat. So where are we headed from here? Let's follow along and see. Ah, drawing librarian. So this was a utility that we used a lot back in the uh, early 90s. It was basically a viewer that ran out in DOS and it would view AutoCAD drawings, allow you to zoom around on them, allow you to print them, and it had a lot of really cool features. Um, for starters, you didn't have to have AutoCAD to use it, but you could use it as a front end to run AutoCAD. So like if you opened a drawing in here and identified that it was the drawing you wanted to use, you could then edit the drawing from this point and just like launch right into it. It would also give you information and it would do some stuff with slides that nobody cared about. And then it also had viewports, which were a big, huge deal. Viewports were uh, a brand new thing, like in release 10, I believe. So this program kind of hooked on to that movement and would allow you to view many, many drawings at one time, which was great for like reviewing, you know, like if you got a bunch of files in the door and you had to go through them quick. So now we are going into the DOS version of AutoCAD release 13, which I know we saw on the Pentium, but it's cool to see how it runs on this 486 and to just look at this 486. Uh, to talk about it for a minute, it's a 486-100. It's got 64 meg of RAM. Everything is CF based. So in the front drive bay there, you're gonna see the top drive is the CF card sitting in there. I think it's a two gig. And then under that is a three and a half inch drive. And under that is a CD-ROM. That's just kind of the, the stuff I chose to put in there. Uh, for a pointing device, we are using a Curta IS-1 digitizer tablet with a four button puck. And there I've got an AutoCAD AEC overlay stuffed in there. So that overlay, this was kind of like something that predated mice, although I'm thoroughly aware that the mouse was invented in the late 60s. 
This predated in the CAD world the adoption of the mouse. The digitizer was kind of the way we were drawing in CAD at that time. The digitizer was basically a big flat square that you could move the puck around and pick commands that were programmatically available to the user through that overlay. So the overlay had a file that went with it that you'd load into the AutoCAD menu. And that's uh, in a nutshell how it worked. So here I am running AutoCAD Release 13, the DOS version, of course, which is really lovely and runs quite well. It's always interesting to look back on these retro machines and just see like what the speed was like, because to us at the time, every next machine that came out just seemed phenomenally faster. And sometimes you would like drink the Kool-Aid of the new machine and all of a sudden your, your computing perception would get all skewed and you'd think like, oh, that 386, I can't draw on there at all anymore. But really in going back and working with all of these machines, you know, from this RetroCAD perspective, I've found that that's really not true. And all of these machines ran really well in their own right for the time that they were created. So here we are looking at release 12 of AutoCAD and we have a drawing of the world. And I could go on and on about the details of release 12, but I'm probably doing a release 12 video in the near future. So I'll save my comments for that. And besides it would make this video so much longer. Uh, a couple other things to point out here. I'm using a VGA LCD monitor. And in most cases I'm using a software accelerator for DOS AutoCAD. So I am I was really into the scene of these software accelerators like a Vibrant Graphics Soft Engine, Panacea Turbo DLD, uh, things like that. It was basically a, a program that replaced a dedicated display list card. So here we are in release 10, I believe, of AutoCAD. And we're loading up one of my many, many HVAC drawings that I drew in the late 80s and early 90s. Of course, we are going to zoom around on it and take a look at this air handling unit schedule. Oh my gosh, it's a rooftop unit schedule. So now I'm going to do a zoom dynamic and this was how we zoomed around for the most part. And these load speeds are pretty typical of the time. Um, you know, this was considered pretty quick. You know, it'd zoom right up and you could do your work and pan around and see stuff. I'm gonna pick a few commands here off the tablet at the bottom and you can see as you pick each square, the command comes up appropriately and you can window some stuff and erase that stuff. Man, look at me go, I'm using AutoCAD and I love it. Here is the font menu that would allow you to pick from the dozen-ish fonts that AutoCAD came with at this time. Of course, you could add your own, and the fonts at that time were in a proprietary format called SHX, which was neat because you could edit them yourself. So now we've moved on to another machine. This is the RetroCAD 386, and I'm running Anvil 1000, which is a more of an industrial-oriented uh, mechanical drawing program. I guess you could draw anything with it, but as far as I know, it was mostly for drawing mechanical stuff. And it is super, super neat. And it also uses the same digitizer as we were using before. So this computer is a 386. Um, it's totally maxed out on RAM. I think it's got like 32 meg. Um, my whole approach to this machine was if it can have sims it should be in here so it's got a tecram caching disk controller and you can see it's got four sims sitting in there it's got a sound blaster with sims sitting in that thing and then of course the tecram controller is populated with cf cards so really is the caching thing doing me any good here no but it is so cool i just don't care this is kind of a rat rod computer. You can see the case is all stripped out and it's just like a frame with the pieces in it. And the reason for that is because 
I just wanted to look at them all the time. And it doesn't require any cooling, so who cares, right? So I just tried to pretty it up and make it a real, you know, clean wire managed setup. And uh, that's what you see here. It's, it's darn quick for a 3D6 and it's been a lot of fun to have. So here I'm running AutoCAD release 10. Uh, as I mentioned, viewports were a big deal in release 10. So I'm gonna do a hidden line removal of this 3D model and this took an incredibly long amount of time when I ran it. So again, it's gonna be sped up 1200% for your viewing enjoyment. Here we go, let's type hide and then watch it happen. What else did I wanna say about this machine? Ah, in the middle of the machine, you can kind of see a long graphics card in there. That is one of my two Nth Engine video cards. I'm not gonna demonstrate it in this machine, but I'll demonstrate it in another one towards the end of this video. Uh, it's basically a proprietary dedicated graphics card that only works in certain situations with AutoCAD. So it was, it was a lot of fun. So here we have AutoCAD Release 9. We're running the Columbia drawing, which I'm sure if you've seen AutoCAD, you've seen this drawing. Now there are actually two different shuttle or Columbia drawings in AutoCAD. There's this isometric view, and then there's another one where the space shuttle is like standing on its launch pad. So sometimes I wonder when people say like, oh, is that the Columbia drawing in AutoCAD? Which one they're really referring to? Hard to know. Kudos to whoever created this thing in the first place. So here I am just going through some of the simple menus of AutoCAD Release 9. This was a release I used a lot back in the day. All right, so now we are into the 286 realm. Uh, this is a quick clip from when I upgraded this 286 with a CF card and a late model Monotech floppy drive controller because the floppy and hard drive controller in this thing came to me with some problems. So here we are running AutoCAD 2.5. Uh, this machine has a CF card C drive and an actual spinning hard drive D drive. Then it's got five and a quarter, three and a half, and a CD-ROM just because why not, you know? How weird is that? So it runs at 16 megahertz. This is the St. Paul's Cathedral drawing. And we are gonna do a hidden line removal on this. This is what you called a two and a half D drawing. Because there were no actual 3D commands in AutoCAD yet at this point, you could draw in quote unquote 3D by drawing like polylines and circles and then making them thick and looking at them like from an angle. And so you could draw things that sort of looked like 3D. So they called it 2.5D. Of course, at that time we didn't call it that, but once 3D stuff came out, it became real popular to refer to that, you know, as a term. So here it is. Again, this is sped up, I think, 2,400 times. So I held my hand perfectly still for like 15 minutes while this happened. Yikes. So also this screen draw right here is equally sped up. I mean, just like, wow, did this take a long time, which is why people really didn't use AutoCAD 2.5 for a lot of 3D modeling, because these things would take forever to render, if you can call this rendering. And again, like at this point, there are no pull down menus or anything. That's not part of the program. Uh, there was a text mode here that you see that, that we were real reliant on and you'd switch back and forth between the graphical and the text mode and then use this screen menu on the right. I've had some people recently refer around me, refer to this thing around me as that old crummy menu or whatever, but I prefer to think of it as that old awesome screen menu because it's where I got my start and I don't know, I really liked it. This actually was the first version, AutoCAD 2.5, that I did work with and got hired working with. So it's very near and dear to my heart. Now I'm just showing you some of the, you know, utility functions and 
you can pause and look at those if you're interested in that. So now we're going to load up AutoSketch. AutoSketch was from this moment where AutoCAD decided like, man, or Autodesk rather, decided, man, we got to make programs that we can sell at, at the store, like at CompUSA or something. So they started coming out with these boxed softwares that were going to arguably be alongside Lotus 1, 2, 3 and Harvard Graphics. And they were. You could go buy them at the store. Now, at the time when AutoSketch came out, I was totally against it. I was like dyed-in-the-wool AutoCAD user, and I thought this was like a child's toy. But having gone back and obtained this software now and loading it up and using it, it is a really competent program. And honestly, I enjoy doing stuff in it. It's got a ton of features. It's got all the grid and snapping and layers and text stuff and blocks and, you know, like kind of everything you could want. You know, here I am drawing a circle. And then uh, I realized, I think at this point, like, hey, I didn't snap that to anything. So now I'm fishing around because I haven't used this program in four months. Hey, where's the attach mode? There it is. So you can set like which running object snaps you want to have happening all the time. So it's kind of a different model than AutoCAD where you can sort of like ad hoc choose your snaps at the moment. But in AutoSketch, you had to kind of set them up front and salute the flag and then, and then you could snap. So that was cool. All the settings for AutoSketch, and there are many, are all piled up in, in this one settings menu. And again, the layers, you know, they were there, but you really couldn't do anything with them other than use them. You couldn't like name them or anything. Uh, here's the about screen. It's got this nifty quote on it. And then here's my favorite part. AutoSketch came with a built-in game. So you could play Connect 4 against the computer. And geez, I wish AutoCAD would have had this. But honestly, we did really use the shell feature of AutoCAD quite a bit to go out and play like games like Jet or Wolfenstein or Doom or whatever, but it would have been pretty cool to have like a, a fully sanctioned built-in Autodesk game like this one. I rarely win this game and I find it especially frustrating, so let's watch as the computer beats me once again. And it has. You. All right, so we've finally gotten to my slowest machine of all. And this one is a retro sleeper. So it's a, a new looking case, you know, with a modern power supply and kind of some modern features. I've got some LEDs in here, but it's running an NEC V20 processor. So it's running at 9.5 megahertz. Uh, this is a monotech. NUXT machine. This is the manual for the motherboard. Uh, came from New Zealand. It's an ITX form factor motherboard. And I built this machine so that I could run a CGA card and also to run this Nth Engine 1024 by 768 card, which we'll look at here in just a moment. Uh, before we do that, uh, I should also point out that we're driving this monitor's CGA card with a Monotech eternal CGA converter. So that's what's giving us this signal here. And before we go on to our nth engine demonstration, I'm just going to run two other older versions of AutoCAD. So here we've got AutoCAD version 2. Uh, the manual for it's here. And we are going to run that classic AutoCAD drawing, the nozzle. If you've ever been around AutoCAD, I'm sure you've seen this drawing. It was a a mainstay of the demos of the time. And if memory serves, the big feature of this drawing was that it was actually mirrored on itself, which mirror was a brand new command, I believe, in version two of AutoCAD. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but who knows? Maybe I'm correct. So here we are 
in AutoCAD, it has no pull down menus in this version, obviously. Everything is based off this screen menu. Back at the time, this was just called the root menu. So it didn't even say like AutoCAD at the top. And all of the commands either had to be typed in or picked from this menu. So you'd go in and pick and say you wanted to zoom a window, and then you could go in and do that zoom. Now a friend of mine actually has this nozzle. Shout out to you, Sean Hurley. And he's showed it to me over a zoom call. It is as cool as you would think a fireman's nozzle. Wait, that sounded wrong. A nozzle for putting out fires would be. So with that, let's move on to what is really the oldest version of AutoCAD that I have. And that is going to be version 1.4. And this folder is called ACAD 14, but it's actually 1.4. This is DOS and there's no long file names or anything like that. So let's open it up and here we are, AutoCAD 86 version 1.4. And this drawing that I'm gonna bring up is a drawing of a vertical fire damper. And this is a piece of equipment that I drew as my first drawing in AutoCAD. This was actually the drawing I drew back in, I think 1988 to get my very first AutoCAD drafting job. So I got to draw this in front of seven or eight engineers and uh, I guess they liked it because I ended up working there. So back in this version, again, everything is text and there's just some interesting features. There's an indicator up here for the fill mode, uh, ortho, snap, and then T was for the tablet. Uh, the layer is 127. The layers back at this time could not be uh, named anything. They had to use these numerical names and apparently that screen's not gonna come up right now, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So this is AutoCAD 1.4. Uh, since I've done a zoom in every single other version that I've showed you, let's do a zoom in here. Oh man, that's some good zoom. All right, and with that, we're gonna move on to our last demonstration, which is AutoCAD running with the Nth Engine graphics card. All right, we're gonna test out this Nth Engine card and demonstrate it for you. To run AutoCAD, we're gonna use a batch file that loads up the particular driver that makes this card work. Again, this card only runs a 1024 by 768 and it only runs with AutoCAD. Uh, in this case, it, this card is set up to run specifically with AutoCAD release nine and release 10. So you'll see that the interface is basically split across these two monitors. So we're gonna have the text-based side, and I'll just load up the drawing here, and then the graphics-based side on the CRT here. And the advantage of this was that you could see all of your command things going by, as opposed to nowadays, they all appear on three lines at the bottom of your monitor. And of course, millions of people use AutoCAD and they all think it's just the greatest thing to have it this way now. But back in the day, this was pretty groundbreaking stuff. So through the magic of editing, let's load up this drawing, which is again, running in release 10, kind of a lot of AutoCAD for this processor. Here we go. All right, so we're loaded up. And we can see that the features here are that we have two monitors running. We've got a bird's eye window that we'll use in a moment to show off our zooming ability. And we can do our text-based things over here on the text monitor and then depend on the CRT 
for our graphical things. See how much drive space is left? Thank you very much. All right, let's go in and do the thing that we came to do, which is to zoom around on a drawing. And I'm just going to zoom a window and zoom up closer to this 3D house. All right, here we are, we're closer. Now this bird's eye window actually goes away when you get near it, kind of the, the feature of how that worked. And it also came with a custom menu for AutoCAD that had special commands that make all this stuff work. So now if we want to go in and actually use the bird's eye, we can just pick on use the bird's eye and we see a little marching ants box that indicates where our screen is zoomed up on. So we're able to pick in here and then move it around and it immediately goes over and updates the display with the current view as depicted in those marching ants. We can also just pick two points in here and set a brand new zoom from scratch. So that is pretty much it. Does it pan around in real time? No, that wasn't a thing at all. This is what it did. And for that, you would pay $4,000 for this graphics card. That's the Nth Engine card. And I thank you for watching this video. You know, if you've enjoyed it, you're welcome to come on over to my channel, RetroCAD, and check out more of this. We, we do this stuff all the time. You can also catch me on Twitter, at Retro underscore CAD. Thanks again for watching. See ya.